the objective of this topic is to identify the causes of poor welding results and the proper preventative actions. Inspection of welds is usually the job of someone other than the person who does the welding. A welding inspector must have a good knowledge of welding, drawing, metallurgy, and testing, and be able to present fair and impartial judgments. The inspector's job is to make sure that all of the requirements established by the welding procedure have been met. However, as the welder, it is your responsibility to perform the work in accordance with the requirements and be able to make your own visual inspection of the work. Your inspection should not only be after the fact, it should be a continuing process before welding, during welding, and after welding. Before welding inspection includes verifying all requirements up to the actual welding. To do this, refer to the drawings, specifications, and procedures. Check the following points. Is the joint preparation in accordance with the drawing? If not, a sound weld might not be possible. Are the part dimensions correct? And do the joints have proper fit-up to assure correct assembled dimensions? Inspections during welding make sure that you are performing in accordance with the proper procedures. Check the following points. Does the type of base metal conform to the drawings? Wrong material could produce a faulty weldment. Is the material clean and free of paint, oil, dirt, and solvents? What electrodes are specified for the work, and are they the correct size? Correct electrodes must be used throughout the welding procedure. They must be properly stored and in good condition. Is your welding position as specified for each weld? Now, Inspect your welding equipment. Is it suited for the job? That is, will it deliver the proper current and polarity? Is it in safe condition? Faulty holders and broken insulation should be repaired or replaced immediately. If preheating is specified for the weldment, do you have the proper equipment and the knowledge how to apply it? Check these points. Is the preheat temperature of the part being kept within the specified range? Is the part evenly heated? How is the temperature to be measured? Also, make sure that the part is heated all the way through. Are fixtures being properly used to control dimensional alignment and distortion? Make frequent checks. Do you have the proper skill to do the job? If qualification is required, have you passed the test? Keep in mind the five essentials for proper welding. Correct electrode size, correct current, proper arc length or voltage, correct travel speed, and proper electrode angles. When interpass cleaning, chipping, grinding, or other methods are specified, be sure you are equipped to do them. If repair welding is necessary, be sure to obtain the necessary background information, such as metal composition, distortion, residual stress, heat treating, and so forth. Specifications for repair procedures should be obtained or prepared in advance and then carefully followed. Are distortion correction procedures being used? Distortion is kept under control through the sequence in which the welds are deposited. The size of the welds, the use of preheat, and the use of clamping fixtures. When welding is complete, inspect for conformance of the weldment to the drawings or specifications. Check fillet dimensions by obtaining a pocket gauge set which will measure leg size and face conditions for fillets from 1 8 inch to 1 inch. 
measure the legs with the gauge marked for the proper weld size. If the face is concave and does not touch the gauge, then the weld is undersized. If the weld face does not allow the gauge to seat on the base metal, then the reinforcement is excessive. Make a visual inspection of the weld to check for obvious defects. A good weld will have a smooth, regular, well-formed face. It will be uniform in cross-section with no undercutting, overlapping, or piling up. It provides the required strength with a minimum of metal. Bad welds will often have poor appearance. Some of the external defects to watch for are undercut. Now this is a melting away of the base metal on either side of the weld, causing unfilled grooves that weaken the weldment. Overlong arc lengths or improper electrode angles are the usual cause. Surface cracks can appear in the weld itself or along the surface of adjacent base metal. They are caused by an improper match of base metal and filler metal, insufficient cleaning, excessive joint restraint, or not enough preheat. Cracked welds break easily. Surface porosity occurs because of dirt or contaminants on the base metal, or lack of shielding coverage if the travel speed is too fast. This defect also weakens the weld. Excessive spatter is the result of too much amperage or overly long arc lengths. Since some of the filler metal ends up as surface spatter, the weld is usually weak with insufficient fill in groove welds or excessively concave fillet welds. Spatter also mars the overall appearance of the weldment. Unfilled craters result from improper restarting and finishing techniques that leave gaps in the weld. This can lead to cracking. Underfill or concave fillets are also weak welds due to the lack of filler metal. This reduces the throat of the weld. Excessive reinforcement or convexity is the result of too much filler metal. Besides being wasteful of filler, the excess reinforcement can also weaken the weld by creating stress points along the toes. Overlap is similar to excessive reinforcement and is caused by slow travel speeds or excess current. Notches are produced along the toes that concentrate stresses and can cause weld failure. Arc strikes are not only unsightly, but can create weak points in the base metal itself, causing the weldman to fail under stress, even though the weld itself is correct. Two other defects that can affect the entire weldment are distortion. This is the result of overheating, overwelding, or not alternating sides while welding. The entire part is pulled out of proper alignment by shrinkage stresses. Defective base metal, lamination, scab, seams, and other defects can also cause failure of the weldment itself. Sometimes, welding defects are internal and are not discovered by surface inspections alone. As a test of your ability to make good welds, you may be required to perform certain qualification tests. These are similar to the fillet weld break test as performed in job practices 9 and 20, or a guided bend test as performed in job practice 16. These tests can reveal problems with welding technique that are not apparent by visual inspection alone. Remember, a professional welder is continually aware before, during, and after welding of the specifications and procedures that produce quality work.